Okay, so NASA has indeed postponed the Artemis moon landing to 2025. Wow, nobody saw that coming. Of course, the Blue Origin lawsuit provided the perfect excuse for that delay. During a media teleconference, NASA gave some updates on the future of the Artemis program and it was really painful to listen to. In order to spare you this, we're going to give you the most important details of that teleconference and the news are not so good as you can guess. And just at the right time, Blue Origin came forth with a shiny new propaganda video and you won't believe it, but this time it's not even CGI. I know, right? So is it a real product? Spoiler alert, also no. So what is it then? Well, let's talk about all this. So now that the Blue Origin lawsuit is finally over, NASA came forth to celebrate this momentous event and announced that finally the agency can continue working on the future return of humans to the moon with the Artemis program. And one would think that NASA would choose to focus on the Lunar Starship, its amazing capabilities and give us some updates on the mission architecture of Artemis 3, you know, the first astronaut landing on the lunar surface. But instead, NASA released a media teleconference on November 9th, where they talk about how amazing SLS and Orion are and how they are fundamentally important for NASA's return to the moon. Oh boy. First, NASA started off by lying about the Orion cost numbers, saying that Orion will have cost about $9.3 billion until its first crew launch. A number that is brutally wrong, because Orion actually started development already back in the Constellation program in 2006. So if you take these costs into account, the number is actually closer to $22 billion by the end of 2021, according to NASA's last Inspector General report on Orion. And of course, that first crew launch, Artemis 2, surprise, surprise, has also been delayed to 2024. Artemis 2 will be the first manned lunar round trip mission since Apollo 8 in 1968. Of course, the Blue Origin lawsuit, having absolutely nothing to do with SLS and Orion, still somehow managed to delay that program for another year. Wow! What a convenient excuse this lawsuit is. So until Artemis 2, costs for Orion alone, yes, uh, we're talking about this capsule here, like a freaking capsule, is estimated to cost $25 billion. Just as a comparison, the entire Starship and Super Heavy program is estimated to cost a maximum of $10 billion, according to Elon Musk, which is not even half the cost of this capsule. Then the teleconference got really interesting when a reporter from the New York Times asked about the possibility of sidestepping SLS and Orion and to use only SpaceX hardware to get astronauts to the moon. NASA Administrator Nelson, in true fashion of a good politician, started throwing out half-truths and propaganda. He said, quote, there's only one rocket capable of doing this." End quote. That rocket of course being the SLS. This is quite hilarious I have to say. So the only option of getting astronauts to the moon is really only the SLS and Orion? And the moon starship is just a moon lander, is it? It will be quite hilarious for NASA to watch SpaceX conduct their own lunar missions and sidestepping NASA. I think it will be pretty damn hilarious watching NASA sitting there with their insanely overpriced SLS and Orion, which they are forced to use by US Congress, all the while SpaceX can easily conduct their own moon missions. So how would NASA use the moon starship? Well, in 2025, the year where NASA currently intends to launch the Artemis 3 mission, which has, as we said, been delayed from 2024. NASA will launch an SLS rocket with Orion and four astronauts to the moon. In moon orbit, Orion will dock to the lunar starship that has been launched there prior to that and they will descend to the lunar surface in that behemoth. After the mission is over, probably it will last for around a week, 
The Moon Starship will return to orbit and dock with Orion. Orion will return to Earth and splash down in the ocean. But what NASA apparently seems to miss, or doesn't want to see, or isn't allowed to even think, is that SLS and Orion are entirely not necessary for a moon landing with the Lunar Starship. So let's imagine how a mission architecture without NASA might look. So SpaceX launches Lunar Starship to Earth orbit, then 8 Starship tanker launches in order to completely fuel up the Lunar Starship in orbit, 8 because Super Heavy will have around 150 metric tons of LEO payload capacity, and completely fueling up a Starship means 1200 metric tons of propellant, which is required. So that makes 8 refueling Starship Super Heavy launches. After the Moon Starship is completely fueled up, SpaceX launches a Falcon 9 with Crew Dragon and docks it to the Moon Starship. The Moon Starship initiates the translunar injection burn and goes to the Moon. It then inserts into lunar orbit and descends to the surface. After the mission is over, the Lunar Starship lifts off, returns to Moon orbit and activates its engines to fly back to Earth orbit. In Earth orbit, Lunar Starship docks to the Crew Dragon from before that has remained in orbit all the while and the astronauts return with it to the Earth, that's it. And in theory, Lunar Starship should have enough propellant to be able to land on the Moon and return if the payload mass is not completely maxed out 200 metric tons. This mission architecture would cost NASA about 10 times less than an SLS and Orion launch. But hey, of course NASA is obliged to use the SLS because jobs, we need that job program to stay alive. This is government inefficiency at its core. Instead of letting the free market take the most efficient course of action, no, let's waste billions of taxpayer dollars for an insanely overpriced non-reusable solution. Oh, and please subscribe to this channel if you like space news with a bit of sarcastic undertone. Thanks a lot in advance. SpaceX could of course go even further. Instead of Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon, SpaceX could use the Crew Starship to launch a lot more than only 4 astronauts to orbit. Crew Starship would then dock with a refueled Lunar Starship in orbit and land 20 or more astronauts on the Moon at a time. So we can see how little sense it makes to use SLS and Orion together with the Lunar Starship. You would severely limit your capabilities of what you can achieve with the SpaceX Lunar Starship architecture. But I think NASA will learn the hard way. There will probably emerge a dualistic approach to Moon exploration. You will have NASA that will be obliged to use their SLS and Orion architecture by Congress. And as soon as SpaceX will have a working Starship fleet, you will see the private sector again do what NASA apparently can't. I am telling you friends, we will see private moon bases be constructed a lot faster and much more efficiently than a NASA Artemis moon base. In the last video we showed the idea of using Starship itself as the backbone for a moon base. You can just land Starships on the moon, leave a few behind and you get 2500 cubic meters of living space per Starship. A very simple yet effective plan and that way humongous moon bases will be constructed without even needing NASA. NASA can go on flying their SLS and Orion and build super tiny moon bases while the private SpaceX moon base will be already there to greet the poor NASA astronauts. It will be quite hilarious to watch and I am pretty convinced that this is how it will develop should NASA not drastically change its course of action. But listening to this latest press conference, um, it sure doesn't seem as if NASA would change its course of action, as sad as it is. In other quite funny news, Blue Origin now released a new video. And what is that? Amazing! They are finally revealing a first prototype of New Glenn! Wow! Finally, man! I thought we'd never see a New Glenn prototype. So when can testing start? You know, pressure tests, static fire and so on. It will be awesome. Oh wait, what is that? You say this is only a dummy? So that's not actually a prototype you say, but only a dummy of New Glenn? Oh, so 
Okay, what you see here is a simulator or dummy version of New Glenn called GS1, which will be used to, quote, enable the team to practice ground ops for New Glenn's massive first stage, including the transport from the rocket manufacturing complex to LC-36 for integration, end quote. We now have late 2021 and New Glenn is set to launch in 2023. To that I say, no freaking way. If they continue with this pace, seriously, I doubt that New Glenn will take off before 2024. I really hope they will kick into high gear now that Jeff Bezos is focusing all his energy again on Blue Origin, now that his full-time career of filing lawsuits has failed. Maybe Blue Origin will be able to show us a first real prototype of New Glenn by next year or the year after that. Let's see when. But we can be sure that we'll get to see many more shiny propaganda videos where happy seeming employees state how amazing it is to work at Blue Origin. Quite the contrast to the open letter published on September 30th in which a group of 21 former and current Blue Origin employees complain about the brutal working conditions at Team Blue with allegations of sexual harassment and everything bad that can happen in a workplace. Reality and propaganda always very far apart from each other. Anyways, friends of space, that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Jishuan and me wish you all the best and on to the future.